Hello everyone, this is Tactical Edge here and today we have a tournament battle to showcase. This was played on the ODM LAN Battles tournament and it is literally the closest game I've ever had on Total War Warhammer 3 multiplayer. So this was played against Strat Games and I was playing as the Dawei using a front line of Dwarf Warriors backed up by a bunch of miners with blasting charges at the back. Three rangers hidden in plain sight due to their stock ability, a couple slayers to protect them from large targets, and in the middle, a single unit of iron drakes with their burnt effect discouraging any enemy units. Now, in the skies, we have a couple gyrocopters because I know that Strat Games do love his rushing, especially with his chariots, so I need some kind of anti large armor piercing firepower. And these guys, the gyrocopters, would be safe in the sky from the Norskin infantry rush. As for leadership, we have a single runesmith coming in with the Hammer of Karakdraz, the Rune of Slowness, as well as the Rune of Speed. And then we have the legendary White Dwarf back to his full power as the Flash Bomb has been returned to him. And he is bringing in his full kit, Grom Brindle has no fear, Foe Seeker, as well as the Rune Axe of Grom Brindle, coming in with the Sweet Sweet Discourage effect aside from the buff to Armor Piercing Weapon Strength. Now, for the Norskan army led by Strat Games, we have a front line of Marauder Berserkers mixed in with Marauder with great weapons. At the back, a massive line of missile throwing axes with the Marauder Hunters and Javelins, Marauder Hunters as well. A mixture of anti-large and armor-piercing firepower really trying to spam that missile attacks. Of course, there's also the staple triple Marauder Chariots to disrupt my backline, led by Throg himself providing some single entity dueling power. No abilities whatsoever, just him and his big old stone club. Now for the Norskin spellcasting department, they have a shaman sorcerer somewhere around here. Yep, right here. Going as cheap as possible, no mounts, only a single spell, that is the Plague of Rust. A very effective spell in debuffing the heavy armor on Dowies and maximize the damage on the non-armor piercing berserkers. Now that we're done with the army builds, it is time to sit back and enjoy this intense battle. Seeing my opponent going for an infantry rush, I'll be holding my position with the Dawi formation, maintaining its integrity so I can start counter firing as my opponent closes in. And as you can see here, Rangers already opening up at the Berserkers and Marauders chipping away their health due to their low armor. However, the dreaded Chariot Blob is here. I'll be pushing off some of my Gyrocopters with Brimstone Gun trying to deal with them, but they will be plowing straight through these Dwarf Warriors. I countered with a flash bomb hitting the entire chariot blob, slowing them down, but they'll still use their mass advantage to push through slowly but steadily. Behind the front line, the miners are now lining up their blasting charges, doing some decent damage, and the brimstone guns will continue to fire. However, on this flank, there is a dwarf warrior being hit by a plague of rust, really good magic play there, massively nerfing their armor so that the berserkers can cut through them much quicker. With the front line handled by the Berserkers, the Chariots are driving deep into enemy lines, effortlessly running over the Miners and now going after the Rangers. On the right flank though, things are a little bit more stable, the Iron Drakes are taking massive damage from the Armor Piercing Furring Axes and the Javelins, but I do have the Marauder Infantry held back by my Dwarf Warriors, and now the Miners after expanding their Blasting Charges will be running into combat as well. These Javelins tries to push up and chase off my Andrex, but I will be responding with the Slayers. They might be anti-large, but they do have great combat stats. With their Whirling Axes, they will be slicing and dicing some poor Norskins today. As for the heroic engagement, I have a massive advantage here. Throg, despite being a powerful melee combatant without any abilities to support him and being hit by the Hammer of Karakdraz, his melee attack is being lowered to a meager 20. Combined with the morale effect from Rune Axe of Grom Brindle, he is discouraged and will be routed off for the first time in battle, and Runesmith as well as the Grom Brindle will be chasing after them. On the right flank, I was able to route off some Marauder infantry with the help of Slayers, Miners, and the Iron Drakes, but the Berserkers are still cutting through my poor Dawi warriors. And the Chariots are unstoppable as they have plowed through pretty much all of my backline, now going all the way to the right flank, disrupting my missile play. And in the sky, Brimstone Gun, they are doing damage for sure, but due to the chariots continuously moving around the battlefield, they're missing quite a few shots as well, and they are not exactly taking them down fast enough, as my left flank has been collapsed completely. With only some slayers holding the left flank right now, these slayers who are on the right ran all the way to the left, trying to tie down and slice through all these Marauder Hunters, 
and miners still tying down the marauders but they will be hacked down eventually. On the right flank, the chariots are still going so I'll be recalling my heroic duo, Ron Brindle and the Rune Smith, trying to reinforce the fight in the middle but the um, berserkers now really going on a rampage with nothing to stop them. There are some dwarf warriors but they are disrupted by the chariots as well and they're just cleaving a bloody path through my iron drakes and now they'll be going after Grombrindo and Rune Smith. I do expect their heavy armor will help them mitigate the damage from the anti-infantry berserkers but the problem is they are being tied down and the chariots have nothing to stop them. Now disrupting the rangers, my dwarf warriors trying to tie them down so that my brimstone guns can start firing again and at the back, Frog cunningly hiding in the forest, trying to use his infantry advantage to finish my army. While the Slayers slowly being dragged down by all these Marauder infantry around, especially the Berserkers would trade really well against the lightly armored Slayers who have anti-large bonuses. Over here, the Rangers do have decent melee stats, so they are beating back the meager Marauder with great weapons, and then the Marauder Hunters will be focusing them down, so we'll be going for a bit of missile exchange as the rest of the battlefield are really just a lot of units scattered around, the Marauder Berserkers at the back catching and slaughtering my poor rangers, great weapons Marauders routing off the Dwarf Warriors, and so without any infantry to stop these Berserkers, I'll be throwing in the Gyrocopters dropping a bombing run, so that the um, Marauder Berserkers can take a bit of damage before they go into combat again. Still, there is one single Marauder Chariot left after the Brimstone Gun Bombardment, and they are still roaming around rampaging through my lines and the other brimstone gun gyrocopters is just sitting in the forest knowing that Frog is around here they were just slowly focusing him down with the rest of their ammo although they did not have enough ammo to cut through him so I'm just trying to do as much damage and get him as close to the healing cap as possible but over here my balance of power is basically held up by my single entities and the gyrocopters as I'm gaining an advantage here but a nice missile play from Strike Games forming a firing line with the Marauder Hunters. And they will be focusing down poor Grombrindo who does not have any missile block chance, relying mostly on the heavy armor but that's not gonna be enough in the face of all these armor piercing throwing axes. And the Runesmith will be fighting off some Marauder Berserkers as the rest of my units are pretty much chased off by my opponent's mobility. There are still some gyrocopters flying in the skies here. As one of them used up their ammo, they will be flying straight into combat, tying down the Marauder Hunters, stopping them from firing so that my Brimstone Gun, the one with ammo left, will be able to close in on Frog and start firing. Now, back to the heroic engagements. Grumbrindo is now debuffed by a upgraded Plague of Rust. This battle is so effective in countering the heavily armored Dawei here, debuffing Grumbrindo's armor so that the javelins on the side can do a bit more damage with their non-armor piercing missiles, making use of their great missile strength. While over here, the Brimstone Gun Gyrocopters, the one with ammo, decided to pull away from this engagement and try to chase off Throg with a bit of melee. But unfortunately, Throg is just too strong in combat armor piercing and anti-large, perfect to kill off these poor gyrocopters, so I'll be quickly pulling them out yet again. Now they will be charging into combat yet again, silencing the Marauder Hunters with their melee attacks, protecting the other brimstone guns from the Marauder firepower. Now let's do a bit of fast forward as the battle is going into a bit of a lull. My gyrocopters are still firing and some of them actually fired into the Marauder Hunters, not exactly what I need, and they'll be diving down to chase off Frog, but Frog instead whacks one of the gyrocopters destroys them in combat and will be now regrouping with his infantry support as they keep chucking throwing axes at my characters. Seeing that my heroic units are closing in, Frog decides to turn away but a rune of slowness, debuffing his speed down to a meager 17, Grumbrindle was able to catch up by pumping his short dwarven legs. On top of that, I throw in a flash bomb really trying to pin down Frog and finish him off but great play from Strat Games throwing those Marauder Hunters into melee combat even with ammo, using their bodies to stop my infantry sized lord from pulling through. Being distracted by the infantry, Grombrindle was only able to get a single hit onto Frog, though unfortunately he was not able to turn and fight with the Hammer of Karakdras, debuffing his melee attack to Oblivion. Still, with his regenerated HP, he barely survived this onslaught, while my infantry characters were dragged into melee combat by all these Marauder infantry. With Frog back to full speed, I was unable to pursue him with my characters, so I'll be sending some gyrocopters to escort him off. 
At the same time, the Dawei characters are now tied down by all these Marauder infantry with their faster speed, and debuffed by the upgraded Plague of Rust yet again down to 65 armor. All these Marauder hunters, berserkers, whatever is in there will do significantly more damage to the heavily armored originally at least, Grombrindo. However, I do have that Rune Axe of Grombrindo here using that Discourage effect lowering the leadership of these Marauder with great weapons, so that is some pressure taken off my back. While in the far side, Frog is still being escorted by the Gyrocopters, but my opponent here still have a lot of infantry for me to cut through. Whether my character duel is enough, we will see, but Grombrindo is taking quite a bit of damage from the Berserkers thanks to all those Plague of Rust debuff. With the help of magic, the Berserkers with their anti-infantry bonus and great weapon strength are just taking down Grombrindo. At the same time, there are more Berserkers charging in. Some of them are also activating that Berserk ability, giving them a bit of physical resistance mitigating damage from Grombrindo. I'll be counteracting that with a Flash Bomb trying to lower their melee defenses so the runesmith have an easier time punching through their defenses. However, right now this is not quite enough to save Grombrindo from the damage as another Plague of Rust is dropped in. At the same time, our opponent is just biding the time here. Strike Games holding back the missile infantry, not firing at all because I'm in the forest and a lot of that missile will be blocked, and just conserving their vigor as well. While at the far side, Unfortunately, Frog, despite being chased by a bunch of aerial units, he successfully regrouped with his leadership recovered, so he actually routed off one of my gyrocopters with brimstone guns and I will be pulling the other one out and going for a better engagement. This has been a problem with the uh, routing mechanic, even if you chase them with aerial units, sometimes they would recover. I do hope that CA at some point in the future will fix this kind of problem. Back to the fight in the middle, Grombrindo was able to push off a bunch of Berserkers, partly thanks to his discouraging Rune Axe. Now these Marauder Great Weapons are pulling out of combat, trying to use these missile support the Javelins to focus down Grombrindo. And at the same time, the Marauders will be charging into Grombrindo, hoping to tie him up in melee combat so that the um, Hunters can safely fire, especially now that they are debuffed by a Plague of Rust yet again, Grombrindo is taking significantly more damage. Now, in this guys, at least I have some gyrocopters, the mobility, returning. They don't have any ammo, but they do have that heavy armor to charge in, tie down the Marauder Hunters using their 100 armor to mitigate the damage and silence them, preventing them from firing, or at least absorbing the firepower from the Marauder Hunters with Javelins. At the same time, Runesmith tying down these great weapons Marauders and also the Hunters infantry so that Grombrindo was able to charge into these poor marauders, push them off, and now seeing the Metal Shaman Sorcerer being isolated, I quickly switch Grombrindo's target to the Metal Shaman Sorcerer, and also drop in some Gyrocopters to pin him down. Now the Norskin Caster is trapped and will be hacked down by Grombrindo's axe. The other Gyrocopter is on the verge of routing, but we do have an ability to fix that. Grombrindo has no fear. Buffing up their melee defense up to 30 now that they can actually block attacks from the Marauder Hunters as they only had a meager 6 melee defense originally. With the Unbreakable keeping them in the fight and Rune of Speed buffing their attack, they'll do a bit more damage before they go down. While Grombrindo was able to finish off that Metal Shaman Sorcerer, now only the Marauders are needed to be dealt with, but Frog has returned. He was able to get back into combat once again. He is coming back for blood for vengeance going straight after Grombrindo with his big old stone club. He whacks Grombrindo in the face but it seems that the attack did not go through, and with Grombrindo turning around to face him off, Frog wisely decides to leave this combat, leaving only the infantry and the javelins to deal with my heroic units. So the javelins will be firing into the fray. Marauder chariots charging in as well, but I'll be countercharging with Grombrindo. With a couple smack from my heroic units, these chariots are no longer holding and will be seen off the battlefield. Although my runesmith is quite exposed right now, so Frog, seeing this opportunity, will rush in and give him a good beat down. Grombrindo decided to charge out and face off the Troll King, but the cowardly Troll King decided to pull away a really nice cycle charging movement from our opponent here. Marauder Hunters tying down Grombrindo yet again, and Strike Games will be charging at the runesmith again, but I'll be counteracting his attack with a Rune of Slowness, slowing him down, hoping to catch up with him with Grombrindo. But all that Marauder infantry blobbing around my characters, blocking their paths, and Grombrindo lacking the mass was not able to pull through. 
The runesmith is wavering a bit, but his leadership will stabilize as Ron Brindle, the White Dwarf, will be encouraging his faltering heart. And at the same time, Throg is not willing to engage as he is still afflicted by that rune of slowness. He knows that if he charges in, he will not have that great charge impact and will be attacked by Grom Brindle. So he will be biding his time like a shark circling his prey. And the Marauder Hunters with Javelins will be distracting my heroic unit. Now, Balance of Power is against me because Throg has been healing up, but I still have hope as Grom Brindle will now be charging straight for Throg. He was attempting to attack my isolated Runesmith, but that was only a ploy. As my Grumbrindle, the White Dwarf, is charging in, slowing down Throg with a Flash Form, forcing him to take this engagement. Another debuff is dropped on the Hammer of Karagdras, lowering his melee attack to down to 20. He might have a lot of health, but his attacks are not going through. Without taking any damage, Grumbrindle is punching back hard with the Rune Axe active, discouraging Throg's leadership by a whopping 16. That was more than enough to route off Throg, and this is his third time routing. So that puts him straight into Shattered territory, leaving Norska with only the Javelin Hunters on the field, which my characters can easily hunt down. Army losses is done hit, and victory shall belong to the legendary White Dwarf. GG to my opponent's strike games here, as he had a really good rush with the Norskan infantry and the missile play. I was only barely able to pull ahead, with Grumbrindle and the Runesmith synergizing with each other. Also, a fact worth noting is that this game was played on the ODM Land Battles Tournament, which was cast on the YouTube channel of Human Boy Yes Yes, an absolutely amazing tournament caster, also running his very own best of free land battles league called the Vermin League. So if you want to test your multiplayer skills in a more tournament format, do go check out his channel and join his Discord and take part in his very own ranked ladder of best of free games. Now for the army performances here, the Slayers and the rest of the infantry really didn't do too much here, as they were pretty much bodied by a bunch of Berserkers combined with the Plague of Rust. The real heavy lifter are the Gyrocopters, using their anti-large armor-piercing missiles to shoot down the Marauder Chariots, and the Flaming Brimstone ammo does do extra damage to Throg with Fire Weakness. On top of that, their bombs were quite effective in clearing out the tide of Norskan Marauders. And in the end, they were able to tie down these hunters with their heavy armor, mitigating the incoming damage and locking them in melee, preventing them from shooting at other gyrocopters and my characters. As for my missile infantry, the Iron Drakes really didn't do too much here, being focused down by a whole bunch of Marauder Hunter fire, but the Rangers trade really well against the Marauder Hunters due to their lack of armor and missile block chance. While the Rangers themselves do block missiles, and are quite sturdy even in melee combat, just that they were disrupted quite a bit by the Norskin Chariot play. Now for the heroes, Runesmith didn't do too much damage, his role was mostly for the support, using the Rune of Slowness to pin down enemy units, and also Rune of Speed to buff up attacks. Also, the Hammer of Karakdras was absolutely critical in debuffing Frog, nuking his melee attack and preventing him from landing any armor-piercing hits onto my win condition Grom Brindle right here, who got some pretty decent damage done overall. Right now, the legendary White Dwarf is back at his prime. With the Flash Bomb on him once again, he is now able to pin down enemy units, nuke their melee defense, and just hack them down with the weapon strength buff from the Rune Axe. Combined with that discourage effect, he was consistently routing a whole bunch of Marauder infantry, pushing them off again and again, driving them towards that three times routing limit and shatter them a lot quicker than usual. Even Throg was not able to escape from that discourage effect. I do feel that this is something often overlooked on Grom Brindle. We mostly played him for his flash bomb and after it's gone, we stopped picking him in battles in game two. He does have some solid abilities outside his Flash Bomb, not only with the Rune Axe, but also Grom Brindle has no fear. In a critical moment, it was able to help my Gyrocopters hold their leadership, turning them unbreakable in a desperate situation where I needed them to stay in combat. Now for my opponent's Dread Games Norskan Army, a really good play with the Marauder Chariots there, not a lot of damage done, but in the end, was constantly disrupting my missile backline and running over all my poor infantry. 
I do say that the best play he had in this game was definitely the combination of Marauder Berserkers and the Shaman Sorcerer of Metal. That Plague of Rust was really crucial in debuffing my units and giving these anti-infantry Berserkers a lot more damage than they should have been doing. One of them got shut down pretty hard but the other two absolutely earning back their value, getting plenty of kills and even doing a lot of damage onto Grum Brindle with the help of that Plague of Rust armor debuff. As for the missiles, they did overall a good job in chipping away my unit's health, earning back most of their value, especially by shooting up the poor slayers, my Grumbrindle, and also doing some minor damage to the gyrocopters and miners. As for the rest of infantry, the great weapon marauders did some okay damage overall, and Throg, unfortunately fighting against Grumbrindle with a debuff from the Hammer of Karakdraz, he was not able to dish out much damage throughout the game, and was instead hacked down by the mighty White Dwarf's Rune Axe. Overall, a really close game down to the wire there, and the ending could have gone either way. If not for the discouraged effect on Grumbrindle's item, I most likely would have lost this match. And yeah, that's basically it for today's match. I hope viewers you enjoyed this battle, and if you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and subscribe to get notified every time I upload a new video. They'll be covering more battle replays like this one, wild army builds, and tips and strategies for Total War Warhammer 3 multiplayer. And if you have any replays that you want to showcase, feel free to drop by my Discord or send me an email with the replay file attached. I'll be sure to check them out. And yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.